Welcome back to the channel guys. So today I got a pretty special one for you. A tutorial and a download for auto bling. So PlayStation Classic, these guys that have been hacking this thing, working on it, doing amazing stuff, making this thing definitely worthwhile in my opinion. Very critical of this upon release. You know, the news in the beginning, learning a lot of things with it, it was kind of like, ah, but these guys are definitely saving it. So, hey, people are finding these for like 25, 50 bucks out there, 35 bucks. I think that's a reasonable price, especially with what we can do with this. So on my Facebook group, we've been doing a lot of things, sharing builds, talking about, you know, certain things, just a lot of projects and cool stuff. And one of my members on the group, uh, Yannick, Yannick, I'm not sure how to say your name, bro, but uh, he, he has been doing a lot with auto bleam. So he put out a ready to build auto bleam setup that you could just add your own games. It has a lot of cool stuff on it and it is pretty damn simple. So if you want to make your own custom PlayStation classic build, put your own games, do what you want with it. This is the way to do it. So very simple. I'll have a link to the download. There's no games included but it is pre-set up for you to add stuff. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. It does have bezels and whatnot for a bunch of systems and artwork for a retro arc for a lot of the systems like Super Nintendo, NES, Sega, a lot of that stuff. So that's definitely a cool little bonus, a bunch of themes for Auto Bleam as well for your PlayStation Classic. You can download it on the group. Um, I'll also put a link in the description. It is something that can be shared. There's no games on it. So there we have it. With this, I'm actually using this SanDisk Cruiser USB low profile, low profile. So it's very, it's very small. It barely comes off the, uh, the USB port. It, it's, it's so indiscreet. It's, it's nice. I like using this one. Um, it's only like 12 bucks. I think I paid like 13 when I got mine. But this thing, 64 gigs, you could fit a lot of PlayStation games on it. So far, I've fit like... 120 but i've been kind of scaling it back looking through some games testing stuff on the, my own personal build uh, which i'm going to show you how this all works in a second here but the one main thing you want to make sure is that your thumb drive is formatted to fat 32. this drive right here i will put a link in the description if you want to peep it out um, it's already formatted to fat 32 so you don't have to worry about that but if you have a thumb drive that isn't you can always use a program like Ease US Partition Manager. I've used the trial for other things to partition to, you know, to reformat a partition to FAT32 and it's worked, no problem. But if that's something you need to do, you will possibly need to find a program to format to FAT32 if it's over a 32 gigabyte drive. Um, so we have that. Now, once you download this, the Auto Bleam Ready to Build 0.5.0 folder you're going to extract that bad boy and once you extract it you're going to have this folder here with all of these nice little uh files right <laughs> pretty simple stuff so to get straight into it we're going to have to have a your usb drive named sony i have it all caps and then you're going to transfer those games on or not games but you're going to transfer all these files to the root of your USB drive. Pretty simple stuff. I've already got it transferred over. Not a big deal. So once you have that done, a check mark that you have the drive named Sony. And it's very simple. If you have your drive over here on your uh, file explorer, or whatever, you can go to rename, right click, rename, and just name it Sony and you're good. Um, when you format it, you can rename it the Sony if you so choose. But definitely, boom, name it Sony, FAT32, you're ready to go copy these folders over and that's pretty much it other than adding your games so the next thing you're going to want to do let me see if i have a uh yep there we go so with auto bleam you can use you know bin and queue whatever or pbp i definitely recommend using pbp files because they are smaller you can fit more games uh, multi-disc games are all in one you know, these are condensed compressed files that were used for like the PSP to play PlayStation 1 games. Very cool stuff. So what you're gonna wanna do is once you transfer those files over, you're gonna have a games folder 
boom. I already have a bunch of games in here, but I'm gonna show you what I do. Since I have a set of PVP files, let me just go ahead and grab a Konami Arcade Classics, copy it over to my games folder. Very simple. File has, yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that over. It's a small one, only take a few seconds. And then what you're gonna wanna do if you don't have these files already in a folder is make a folder for them. Now this, you know, if you're adding like 100 games, this could be time consuming, but it's really not that bad. I just continually add games and then I go like this, you know, uh, left click to highlight it, go to rename, and then I copy the game name. And then I just create a new folder, paste that name, copy that, or drag that PVP file, that game into that folder. And then we are good. It is now in our set Konami Arcade Classics. So you do that for each game. All my games that I have on this build are all PVP files. So I'm trying to fit as many as I can at the moment. And then once you have that all set up, all you're gonna do is plug it into your PlayStation Classic, boom, put the power in, have your controller plugged in, and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and jump into that and take a look at how we set it up from there because it's still pretty simple stuff. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay guys, so here we go. We've got the system booting up, the USB drive plugged in. What you wanna do upon your first boot up is make sure the power is not plugged in, get your USB drive popped in there and then plug in the power, wait for that orange light to come on and then press it so it turns green and turns on. That way you don't run into any issues. If you do it the other way, you already have the power plugged in uh, and you pop in the USB drive on your first boot up, it may not boot up auto bleam. It may just go to this, you know, the regular system. But if you do all that and you do things correctly, you should be greeted to a screen like this. So every time you change games, it's gonna recognize that, hey, something was added or something was removed, so on and so forth. And it'll ask you to rescan the system. So it does have databases built in with box art for the games. With this ready to build setup, it has 3D box art for the North American released games, which is pretty damn sweet. The previous version of AutoBleam had some, you know, kind of low resolution standard box art for the games. And I didn't really care for how it looked, but it works just fine. That's why I really love this ready to build setup because the 3D box art looks really good. Uh, hopefully in the future, you know, versions of AutoBleam, it incorporates that for all the regions. I think that'll be pretty sweet. I know there's some new stuff that's gonna be added down the road, but once we're on the screen, you're just gonna go ahead and press X. If it's your first boot up, it's gonna say something very similar just to scan the game. So you hit X, it goes through all your games and it's getting the box art, everything ready to go. And then it's updating the database. Only takes a few seconds depending upon how many games you have. So previously we did go over some of these options down here. I'll briefly go over them real quick again. You would press X, or not X, you would press start to go into those games that you have on your USB drive. You would press X to rescan if you needed to. Uh, you press the circle to go to the original, the PlayStation Classic, the 20 games that are included. So this is pretty cool because these builds with AutoBleam, it's not messing with anything internally on the system. It's not modifying any files on it. So that's why I like using this. Square takes you to RetroArch. There are a bunch of awesome bezels and box art for games there. If you wanna add like Super Nintendo, NES, so on and so forth. In the very near future, we will be messing around with RetroArch on a video showing you guys how some things work. But today, just wanted to look at PlayStation games. The next thing is you could press select to go into some configuration options here. So you get auto bleam theme, which is just gonna change this theme that we're on right now. I'm just gonna leave it to default. Your menu theme you can change around. Disable uh, theme background music. I've disabled it. I don't really wanna hear the music that plays, but if you turn it on, it'll start playing some music. Cool, right? Um, a few other options. The one that was pointed out to me was MIP map patch. Uh, it's been recommended to put it to true, I guess. I'm not 100% what this does, but it makes visuals a little better from what I've been told. Not 100% with that, but by default, it's on false. Put it to true, doesn't really mess with anything. And then that's pretty much it. The other stuff, ah, not 100%. Don't use it, don't need it, so go ahead and go back. The next thing is if we hold L1, we go to memory card manager or game manager. 
Memory Card Manager, I briefly spoke on this before. It is actually fairly useful because you can use, uh, you can put games to share memory cards. That can be important for certain games that share save files. So that's a cool little option we have here. The other one, Game Manager, uh, you can mess around with a few things. There's gonna be an update in the future from what I've been told for AutoBleam where that's gonna become even more useful. We'll talk about that in a moment because I do wanna show you some things here. So we're gonna press start, go into AutoBleam for our games that we have loaded up on the USB drive. It takes just a second, it loads fairly quick for me. Uh, you get the little health and safety warning, whatever, right? So this is a great setup to use to add your own games, but it's not without some faults. I do have to point out a few things, but these things, are gonna become non-issues in the very near future uh, with some of these changes that are gonna take place. But you see already we got the 3D box art, looks really good. But the first thing you're gonna notice is uh, Ark the Lad collection that I have here. Uh, you know, I have Ark the Lad 1, 2, and 3, but it shares all the same box art, which I'm fine with, but it doesn't say which game is which. Now in the near future, there's gonna be an update where a game manager, we can change the names per game and it'll save it here. So we could have it, you know, Ark the Lad 1, Ark the Lad 2, Ark the Lad 3. I don't know if there might be some future updates that just resolve that without us having to change it. But at the moment, I'm fine with it. It's not a huge deal. That only really affects uh, multi-disc games where it's a different game per disc. So just keep that in mind. I'll show you another example in a moment. Um, but yeah, scrolling through, I think this stuff looks really good. Uh, the game so far, everything I've tested, I've not had any issues. You could run into issues that I've heard from some people with certain PVP files. Maybe they were compressed incorrectly or converted incorrectly, and they wind up getting sound issues. I've tested almost all of these games, and I have not come across any of those issues, but it's bound to happen. So, hey, test your games. Make sure everything's good. But really, if they're not like really overly compressed, you shouldn't have an issue. I haven't had an issue, um, but here we go. The next thing I want to point out is like right here with this database of 3D artwork, for some reason, Dragon Warrior 7 is missing its box art, which is pretty disappointing to me because Dragon Warrior 7 is one of my favorite games on the system. But if the cover art does not exist, or maybe it just can't scan that game properly, I'm not 100% with Dragon Warrior 7, but you'll get this 404 cover not found, uh, you know, with a little bender there. Ah, you know, I kind of wish I had the box art for it. Hopefully that'll be fixed in the future, but that was just something to point out. That's the only game that I've had that happen to so far, but hey, there it is. So like I said earlier, the multi-disc games with different games on each disc, Final Fantasy Anthology and Chronicles, both unfortunately do the same thing. So you kind of have to know which one's which, uh, which is really not a huge deal. But there you go, lots of cool games I have on my setup, very easy for you to do the same. As you saw, I added that one game, but it was the same process for every single game that I put on here. Didn't really have to do much of anything. I didn't have to add box art, didn't have to do any kind of weird setup, just boom, use that ready to build setup, pop my games on there. You know, obviously the steps were get the, the auto build, <laughs> the auto ready to build setup, put it on your USB drive that's formatted to FAT32, name it Sony, all caps, put those games in that games folder in their own individual folders with their names. Like I said, I just copy the file name and make a folder of the same name and throw it on there. Uh, that might be an extra step unless you have games already in their own individual folders, but I don't, so that's just an extra step for me. But really digging it, really loving the work that these guys are doing. Join my Facebook group if you're interested in these kind of projects and to see you know where things are going how it's expanding. There's lots of talk about this auto bleam build. Like there's not too much talk of the other builds going on out there. It's more so auto bleam just because of the easy use and how simple it is. So really hope this was helpful to you guys. Smash that like button, make sweet ass love to that notification bell. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Check out my giveaway down below. Uh, it'll be in the link uh, or it'll be in the description and it'll be in the pinned comment little uh, link in there to go to the uh, contest. So that's ending in a few days, giving away a Retro Fighters uh, Fantastic Brawler 64 controller. We will be having some other giveaways pretty soon as well. Maybe even a PlayStation Classic with a thumb drive. You never know. Keep an eye out, guys, but thank you. And with that said, I will catch y'all next time. Peace out, bye-bye, and boom. Bye-bye.